horrible hours and hours of it. And she complains. You're rolling, right? Because this needs but, to be recorded. Yes. Like there but, are like but, people but, but, witnessing but this right now. This but is yesterday, wonderful. we got four. I didn't know we, were going we got this four direction. trees that my wife thought it would be a great idea for us to put in for somebody that were 450 pounds, well, and two, me and my son I, moved two, them. I don't know how we did it. I don't know how. That's right. These arms. We moved a 450 pound tree. You know, yesterday it was 300 pounds. No, it was 450 pounds. I went, My version. Sure. No, you want to hear your version. I went over a counter in an art supply store, <laughs> and she was looking for a type of paint, which true. I which I true. gave you the wrong advice on, of course. Um, it's true. In an art supply store in San Francisco. And it was the biggest sale of the year. Like they're forty percent off is, of like stuff that's already overpriced. It's terrible. And there yeah. was a hundred people in there at least. And then yeah, this. I was looking at this woman from far away, thinking she was a salesperson, and the next thing I know, he's standing in front of me. <laughs> so when we purchased this land, I didn't even see it. I was still in San Francisco. Yeah, yeah there was right. no plantings, really, except for some larger established large, yeah. trees. So it was really a clean slate for us. It's evolved mm -hmm. over a series of years. At first it was kind of a pretty garden mm -hmm. with some edible plants. Mm -hmm. And then it became systematic where we want to have col major collections. So we started keeping tags, putting it on paper, putting it in books, and unwittingly started basically collecting plants and having a record of it and that's how arboretums basically are structured. We we're very much a private garden that tries to function on a public level and we've been doing that for how long would you say a decade, 12 years? Yeah, serious, serious. about six, eight years where, okay. where we're having open weekends Wait, where people are coming here. I'm just how long have we lived here? It's a test. <laughs> Uh, because that'll dictate whether six years, years is really... 23 years? Yeah, so, okay, he's right. <laughs> I got it. 60. You did good, honey. Yes, thank you, thank you. We were learning as we go. We're not um, formally trained other than having our hands dirty with a collective of over 40 years now of working and trying to figure things out and being very lucky about um, being able to look for and source out good books and articles and learning that way. And there's a lot of things that we've gotten to survive here that people said, you can't yes. grow that here. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten things like wasabi. I have wasabi growing when people say, you can't grow wasabi here. It can't go below zero degrees and we have wasabi growing in our Japanese that's like section. A, that's an open invitation for us to try and grow something is that when we you hear, can't oh, do you that. can't, you can't do, do that, that. That's or not that's possible. not going to make it here, or that'll only last for a year. So, and it, there's truth, maybe that is the case, but it's fun trying. And a lot of times, as Scott said, I mean, we it might take more than one shot, but we will figure out what that plant needs in order for it to survive. That is the beauty of gardening, is that it's a process, that it's continually changing, adding, whether you know it's Mother Nature's hand or it's our hand. And that's, for me, the exciting part. It's, it's like the best type of artwork. Our, our family will say, my mother put that in, my dad and mother built that rock wall from scratch. Mm -hmm. It's just, we've done everything by hand. And I would love for um, the next generation of growers to start to get interested in some of these plants and start to propagate it and that these become the next wave of the new forsythias or the new dogwoods or, you know, plants that have been around the lilacs. They were all big sensational hits when they first came here because no one had seen them and that they were, as they've turned out to be industrial workhorses for what their purpose are. So it's all about the, the people who bring plants to the forefront and then someone, a tastemaker, who decides this is the next big plant. This is what should be in everyone's backyard. And we're still very stuck in that. So if we could help educate or get the word out to those people or the next generation who's interested in doing that, even better.
oh, I want to die with a shovel in my hand. I have more ideas than I will ever have time. Can you just have the whole Doug first? 